Um, I was just curious, is there a particular ET civilization that's kind of identified themselves to your contact group? Um, I was thinking in terms of like the Phoenix Lights, I know my understanding is that they've attributed that to the uh, Yael civilization. So I was just curious if there was a particular civilization that's kind of communicated or identified themselves. She's asking if there's a particular ET civilization that's identified itself to our group. The answer is uh, not one particular, but a number, and a number of different species. And my under our purpose of our group is interstellar diplomacy and bringing all of them together. See, so what we would want to avoid is um, a bilateral, a unilateral, but a bilateral or bipolar cosmos, and you want it to be multilateral, and you want it to be uh, all civilizations, if they're capable of reaching this planet and in fact are here, or near, or in our solar system, or have that capability, we would want to have humans who are on a team who are interested in dialogue, peace, and what I call universal peace. I mean, world peace is, is like, the Treaty of, you know, the League of Nations is, is way too late for just world peace. Um, we have to go, unfortunately, straight to universal peace. Because so it doesn't do any good if you have world peace, but the world is united against fighting one or more ET civilizations. That's not going forward. That's going to oblivion. So Hollywood, notwithstanding, and the latest Tom Cruise movie, notwithstanding, you, you really cannot... Uh, enter this subject if you're serious about uh, having a future at all without having a multilateral approach. And so we have had very specific contact experience with different types of species and uh, what have you. And, but my view is that over the years, it's many different ones, different appearances, heights, shapes, the whole bit, even in some of the photographs we have. But the, 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 the point I make to people is that doesn't really matter. That's the external appearance. It's the fact that they're all conscious, sentient, and that what we want to move to is a time of, of universal peace uh, that involves all these civilizations. Uh, because, you know, you cannot go into, if we're going to leave the sort of the last era behind, the era of division and fighting and warfare, which has been the primary organizing principle of this planet for the last few thousand years, both financially and institutionally, has been war. It still is. It's still the biggest industry. You know, it's trillions. Um, if you're going to move past that, and certainly if you're going to move into space, you have to move into it with a new consciousness. As Einstein said, no problem's ever been solved by the consciousness that created it. And so the consciousness of us versus them, and picking and choosing, and this and that. So from the very beginning, what I found is that we were having experiences with very different types of civilizations and species. All shapes, sizes, everything. And it's really beautiful. And I think that's how, that's by design. The, the, the philosophy or the ethical underpinning of what we're doing is based on doing exactly that. So. Yes, sir. I'm curious, I, I pay close attention to the website and pay attention to the, the money raised for the project related to energy development. Right. And I've noticed it sort of remained at 241k for a while. That's and right. It's pretty much after the release, it kind of just stayed there. So, um, with, I mean, you talk a lot, a lot about some very high level connections, both um, in the military and wealth wise as well. And I'm just curious as to what is the real obstacle from utilizing those to get to, I mean, we're talking about free energy, $6 million is really not that much money. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah he's asking the question with the numbers of people who have been interested and looked into these, these issues, why hasn't the amount been raised to create this sort of initial to your lab research project? And, um, you know, you have to ask those people. I know them. Uh, I can tell you what they've told me. The people who are associated with governments and contracting they don't want to touch it because they're afraid. Um, there are some high net worth people I've approached, um, and I'll just give you one example. I can give you this example. You know, my wife knew the de gory details of this, and so did my whole group. Um, and this is somebody who 
lived in Virginia, not far from me, but whose family were industrialists, and they had about a $750 million a year income. And you know, five private jets, and actually I'd used them some, some of these planes to go to some sensitive meetings. And so I approached the sort of the scion, the, 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 the elder of this family, really controlled the operation, and I explained to him how we're running out of time to get this dealt with, and would he do this and help? Because basically, the amount of money he blows out of the tail of his Gulfstream jet would do it. And uh, he said, well, I'll tell you why. It's too dangerous, and I'm not going to risk my children and grandchildren who fly around on my planes to do this. I said, well, if I'm doing it, why are you at risk? And he told me a very interesting story that back in the late 1960s, he knew an executive with General Motors who was telling him about the um, zero-point type energy systems they had in some of the classified research at General Motors and that he felt it was time for that to come out so that every car coming off the assembly line was basically an electric free energy car. It didn't have to be plugged in, I mean, way past the Tesla. And this is, I think, in 68. Um, and he said that two weeks later, after he had, was openly talking about this, this executive was found dead. Um, and it looked like a suicide. But this industrialist that I knew very well told me that everyone knew it was not a suicide. And so I found that, you know, pe the fear is the mind killer. So, you know, there are a lot of people who, um, who know about this, but they don't want to stick their necks out. Um, the public, by and large, just wants to be entertained by it. You know, I would say that if, you know, you can launch an app of, you know, kitty cats playing pianos and probably pull in $10 million in a month or something. You know, what is it, Candy Crush or, you know, some of these idiotic apps and, and video games. Um, but I have not found that the public, the public is always, no offense, doing what you're doing. And that is, why doesn't someone else fund this? So it's a little like, like the, the little red hen phenomenon, where you know, the little red hen, cook want, you know, everyone wants to eat the cake or bread, but no one wants to help cook it. And so everyone's looking for someone else to do it. Um, it it's, it's like someone being stabbed on the street of New York and everyone watching, and no one wants to intervene. Because the people who are high enough in, in industry and finance know that you're stepping on some big toes if you move into this. And the masses, for the most part, mainly want to be entertained by this subject. It's just sort of a fascinating conspiracy theory sort of thing. And so, but, you know, and so that's been the problem. The, the masses haven't put in the funds as, as sort of a, the, the movie was crowdfunded, but you know, moving that from a few hundred thousand to a few million didn't happen. And then the very wealthy people, for the most part, are really afraid of touching this third rail. Boom, zap. Um, but, you know, if you know someone who's got the courage, it's all about courage. And whether it's going out and making contact or, may, you know, having the courage to explore your own capabilities and consciousness or doing this, it's all about the courage we manifest. And um, a lot of times you find that people who are quite wealthy and comfortable do not want to step into something where they could be greatly in harm's way. Um, and so uh, that fear can, it creates its own containment. Now, my own view of it is that I think it's an unfounded fear. I'm not saying there's zero risk. I just think that it's mostly psychological at this point. Um, and um, besides, I tell people I'm the canary in the mine shaft. So as long as I'm still twittering away, you shouldn't have too much to worry about. But, um, you know, I, there have been a number of people, I mean, a few dozen, when I say a few dozen people who have net worth north of hundreds of millions to billions that I've met with, that they do not want to step into this. Um, and what would be easier is to find probably <laughs> 10 or 12 people of more moderate worth who would each put in 500,000 or something. Um, but that hasn't happened either. So we'll see. I mean, I, all, all I say is that, you know, when, the, when people, when, when there's a critical mass of awareness 
and I keep doing everything I can as a single individual, uh, then it'll happen. And if not, then it won't happen and we'll get the consequences of that. And then it'll happen in the aftermath. It, the phoenix, I call it the phoenix, <laughs> picking all up from the ashes. Uh, so it's not a, it, there's no question in my main, mind it will happen at some point, but will it be soon enough? And can we avoid a lot of huge problems? I mean, imagine if we had not needed Mideast oil 50, 60, 70 years ago, um, where we would not have had the hegemony and the presence in the Middle East that have led to the mess we're in now. Um, never mind the biosphere being damaged and the pollution and cancer rates skyrocketing. And, but, you know, again, there was a fear of taking on the macroeconomic status quo. And the macroeconomic status quo, I mean, it's like well, when uh, the Minister of Defense of Canada, Paul Hellyer, and I were talking about this. I, I was at his home, and he says that he was a macroeconomic person to start with. And he said, basically, that's the big problem is that this is not something that's just like creating another computer system. Or it, it's, it's bringing out a whole paradigm of science technology that would change the entire petrodollar system and the whole macroeconomic order. And with it, the commodities markets and, and hundreds of trillions of dollars of wealth that somebody owns that's sitting in the ground in the form of uh, uranium and oil and coal and what have you, plus all the generating capacity that goes with it. So it, it's such a huge change that most people don't want to entertain it, doing it. Um, and I've, you know, I've talked to people at Goldman Sachs about this, and they said, oh yeah, you're talking about basically wiping out $600 trillion in assets. So, trillion. So, you know, and the whole U.S. federal government, including Social Security and all the entitlements, is three and a half trillion. So this is, it's, it, the longer we put it off, the more the world is dependent on the old paradigm and the more it cannibalizes and destroys itself. However, and it becomes more and more difficult to do it. So it's kind of like uh, putting off repairing a, your, your, a leak in your roof or your house. You can put it off and eventually the damn thing's going to cave in on your head. But all I can do, you know, I don't have the resources to do it and um, is articulate what could be done, hope there are some people who gather around the vision and, and, and we get it done in enough time. You, know? you have to understand when I started this in my, I guess I was in my mid-30s and 1990 when I started all this, and my, I thought, well, if I put the information together and provided it on a silver platter tied up in a bow to the right people, they do the right thing. Wrong. So I got disabused of that notion very quickly. Uh, but, you know, so ultimately that's why we then said, well, disclosure of this information, the contact effort, I, I never viewed the government doing that initially. I always saw that as a citizen's diplomacy. Uh, but then also the technology, I realized, would have to be coming from we the people. So it's about organizing we the people. And so I tell everyone who's listening to this, share this information with the right people in your network, send them to our site, and through networking, maybe the right folks will line up who have the courage to step forward and make it a reality. Um, or somebody with one of these technologies who has one that's already operational will step forward and be willing to do something strategically sane. Because the strategically insane thing to do is to do what Stan Meyer did and Rossi is doing and almost every other inventor I know had done which resulted in a catastrophe. So um, all I can do is encourage and, and you know but I do think you know it's all networking you know it's like networking it out there the way that I you know we've reached the people we've reached is through networking so that's really a key thing to do. Thank you.